بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وحبيب رب العالمين I ask Allah Ta'ala to grant us all the sincere intentions for his sake alone Know that we are living in in times where certain certain things have become very very common. When in the past it was not as such. Nowadays, al jahl, ignorance with regards to the religious matters, has become great and widespread. Such that many people who would call themselves Muslims, you would find that they do not fear speaking freely about the religion. Saying things that they have no idea about. Some people, they speak about matters in fiqh, like they will speak about wudu with their opinion. Some people will speak about the prayer, they will see somebody doing something in the prayer and they will rush to give a judgment. They will say his prayer is not valid, for example. Some people, you would see them referring to people who do not have knowledge with regards to the issues of az zakah You would see people who are asking the wrong people, the right questions with regards to a particular hajj that they think that they had made in the past. Nowadays, even if some people with a sincere intention, they want to put things right, they may not be able to do that because there is so much ignorance. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that Allah Ta'ala does not take the knowledge of the religion by, by taking it from the hearts of the people. The knowledge is not snatched from the hearts of the people. Although Allah Ta'ala has the power to do that. But the knowledge is not snatched from the hearts of the people in the times that are getting closer to the Day of Judgment. Rather, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned to us that ignorance be- would become widespread because of the death of the knowledgeable, trustworthy scholars. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا فَسَدَ أَهْلُ الشَّامِ فَلَا خَيْرَ فِيكُمْ Sham, as you know, is parts, is Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, and other parts, other areas. They make up the lands of Asham. The Prophet ﷺ in the past had said about Asham, إِنَّ مَلَائِكَةَ الرَّحْمَانِ بَاسِطَةٌ أَجْنِحَتَهَا عَلَى بِلَادِ الشَّامِ That the, the angels, their wings are spread over the lands of Asham. This means that there is a lot of mercy in Asham. The 40 abdal amongst the awliya, because of whom the rain falls, each and every one of them resembles Ibrahim al-Khalil alayhi salam these people are in Asham. You see, the Prophet والسلام, he mentioned this about the lands of Asham in those times, in the past. Just as he said about Al Yaman, Al Imanu Yamanin wal Hikmatu Yamaniya. Iman is Yemenis, meaning that Al Iman, belief and strength in belief, is in Yemen. 
It's very strong in the Yemen. Likewise, wisdom, al-hikmah, is Yemenese, meaning that it's very prevalent within al-Yemen. This referred to those times in the past. This is the meaning of the saying of the Prophet والسلام, with regards to Asham and with regards to the Yemen. As for today, so recall, recall Asham. He said that the wings of the angels are outspread over Asham. There is a lot of mercy there. This was with regards to the past. He said in another hadith that I mentioned earlier, إِذَا فَسَدَ أَهْلُ الشَّامِ فَلَا خَيْرَ فِيكُمْ That if the majority of people in the lands of Asham, if many people in the lands of Asham become misguided or, or corrupt, then the barakah, the blessings all around the world, all around the Muslim world will lessen. If the people or some people in this particular area of Asham, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine and other surrounding parts, if these lands in general, most of the people in them, if they become corrupt, then the barakah will become less, not only in those lands, but around most of the Muslim world. And this has occurred. This has occurred. In some of the lands of Asham, in Syria, for example, in Lebanon, you would hear the people openly, people who claim to be Muslims, openly Swearing at Allah Ta'ala. This is blasphemy. Billah. You would find it to the extent that people say to their younger children, when they want them to talk, one of us would say, say mama or say baba for example. Or say another word. The guardians or the parents, the elders, they would order the young child to swear at Allah. This is, what, this is real. This is what they do. It was more prevalent in the past. This is what they would do, the lands of Asham. This land about which the Prophet ﷺ previously said that the wings of the angels are outspread over the lands of Asham. But then he also said, إِذَا فَسَدَ أَهْلُ الشَّامِ فَلَا خَيْرَ فِيكُمْ أَيْ قَلَّتِ الْبَرَكَةُ فِيكُمْ if the lands of Asham, the people, many people within it become corrupt, then la khayra fikum, meaning that the blessings will descend. That corruption will occur. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he mentioned that ignorance, it would be seen not because Allah ta'ala takes away the knowledge from the hearts of the people. Rather, Allah Ta'ala takes the lives of the knowledgeable scholars. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam said, ثُمَّ فِتْنَةُ الدُّهَيْمَا Then will come the trial, the dark, dark trial. The dark trial will come. لَا تَدَعُ أَحَدًا مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ إِلَّا لَطَمَتْهُ لَطْمَةِ that it will not leave anybody from this nation except literally it will slap him on the face. This trial. That a person would wake up in the morning he would be a Muslim and in the night he would be a blasphemer. In the night in the evening a person would be a Muslim and in the morning he would be a blasphemer. He said, لا تدع أحدا من هذه الأمة إلا لطمته لطمة This trial, this tribulation, this test 
He said it would slap people in the face. Literally. لَطَمَتْهُ لَطْمَةُ And not just any slap. It would hit hard. People will be trialed. There will come a time, and our Shaykh radiallahu anhu said that this time is upon us, when a person who is holding on to his religion, a person who looks into the matters that he performs, the things that he says, he, he takes care of them. The things that he the things that he does, whether it's a transaction or speaking to another person or treating another person, he looks carefully into it. He doesn't want to perform a transaction with money where he would be committing a sin. He doesn't want to perform an invalid transaction because then that turns into a major sin. He doesn't want to harm another Muslim because the Prophet ﷺ said that al-Muslim, he said that the Muslim is, is better. The pious Muslim has a higher status than the Kaaba. The pious Muslim has a higher status than al-Jannah. So this person, he takes care of this issue. He doesn't want to curse another Muslim. He doesn't want to harm another Muslim by his words or by his actions. He takes care of all of these things. This time is upon us where holding on to the religious rules and implementing them, saving oneself from sins. This time, holding on to the religion within it is like holding on to a burning coal. كَالْقَابِضِ عَلَى الْجَمْرِ this was mentioned fil athar that the time would come. One of the shaykhs of our shaykh, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, the mufti of al-Habasha, shaykh Sirajuddin al-Jabarti. He used to know this hadith, he was the mufti of al-Habasha. He used to look at this hadith and be amazed. How would that be? يُصْبِحُ الرَّجُلُ فِيهَا مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا that a person in the morning is a Muslim. This is a hadith. He would be astonished. How is it that a person in the morning would be a Muslim, and then by evening he's a kafir? And in the evening he's a Muslim, but in the morning he would become a kafir. How would that be? He would sleep and he's a Muslim, and he would wake up, and in the morning become a non-Muslim. How would that? He would be astonished. How would that be? Then he said, I went to Egypt. He said, when I went to Egypt, I was no longer astonished. I understood this hadith. Sometimes you need to see things. We believe in the hadith. We believe in everything that the Prophet ﷺ came with. But sometimes certain things happen and you understand them more. You understand them more. He said, I went to Egypt and I picked up a newspaper. In the morning. And it was full of blasphemy. Full of blasphemy. He said, then this hadith crossed my mind. That you can imagine the hundreds, even thousands, maybe even millions of people that read this newspaper in the morning. And because of their ignorance, they would believe what is in it and become blasphemous. He said, it was then that I understood this hadith. A time would come when people would attempt to have a stab at Al-Islam more than they had been doing in the past. Such a time would come. Where people, they would surround the Muslims just as the people if they want to eat on the floor from one tray, don't they surround the tray? Each one of them takes what he wills. Like that, the Muslim nation will be surrounded. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is an ailment. It is a disease. Ignorance, what does it cause? Ignorance, it causes... Or it drives people to speak about the religion. What happens from this? People start to formulate opinions. Different opinions about different things. 
saying things that ma anzal Allahu biha min sultan. Allah didn't reveal them. They did not come in the revelation, neither in the Quran nor in the Sunnah. Things that contradict the ijma, the consensus, the agreement of all of the Muslims. This is what ignorance does. And then if there are not people, if people are not reprimanded, if there is nobody there to reprimand them and tell them that this is wrong, or there is nobody there to stand up against such people, then this would spread like wildfire. But know that the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزال هذه الأمة قائمة على أمرها حتى لا يضرهم من خالفهم حتى يأتي أمر الله. That this nation لا تزال طائفة من هذه الأمة قائمة على أمرها. That there will be a group of people, and these are the awliya. There will be a group of people in this nation, in the nation of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. That remain steadfast, the awliya. They will remain steadfast. They have the religious proofs and they protect the religion of Allah. And there are people who are helping them, the awliya. Who teach. They might not teach. They might defend the religion in some other way. Allah mentioned in the Quran that some people would give fi sarra wa darra. Some people would give. They would give in times of ease and in times of hardship. Usually when we think of giving, we think, oh, they're talking about donations. They're talking about money. People give to charity. But in the Quran it was mentioned in such a way that it can be understood from it that people not only give their money, they give their time. They exert an effort. They help reprimand the people of misguidance. The Prophet ﷺ said that there are a group of people who will remain in the nation of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. The people who oppose them will not be able to harm them, i.e. they will not be able to eradicate them completely because they will remain. They will remain until when? Hatta yatiya amrullah. Until amrullah arrives. Until amrullah comes. What is amrullah? If you translate it literally, it means until the matter of Allah arrives. Until that matter, that amr, that thing, that special thing arrives. What is this? This is the wind or the fragrance that will come. And will take the souls of the Muslims 100 years before the Day of Judgment. 100 years in which nobody will say, La ilaha illallah. After which, Al Qiyamah, it will fall upon the worst of people. These people, these Muslims who protect the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they will. Remain until that time. So if this is guaranteed that these people will remain because the Prophet ﷺ is truthful. If this is guaranteed, then shouldn't we strive to be amongst these people? Really? Shouldn't we strive to be amongst these people? Shouldn't we strive to do the job that the prophets did? What better job than that? What better job than that? The prophets, you would see them, many of them, they would say, they would say to the people, لا أسألكم أو ما أسألكم من أجر I'm not asking you for money. Numerous times in the Quran you would see statements like this, that the prophets say, each different prophet to a different nation, they'd say, لا أسألكم من أجر I'm not asking for ajr, I'm not asking for an ujra, I'm not asking for a wage. I'm not asking for your money in, in ajriya illa ala Allah. Meaning that Allah will reward me. I don't ask for your money. 
I don't want anything from you. Just listen to me and believe. They spent their lives teaching the religion. And nobody should think, nobody should have this in their minds. Oh, well, they're prophets. They had it easy. Maybe sometimes something would whisper to a person and say, well, they were prophets. They probably had it easy. This was not the case. This was not the case. Many of the prophets, let me give you an example of Adam alayhi salam. You think he didn't face problems? Adam alayhi salam had children. Didn't Qabil kill Habil? Wasn't that a problem? How many of us? Not many of us. How many of us uh, have had one of our sons kill the other? It's a prophet of Allah Ta'ala. One of his sons, he murdered the other. And for every single person who murders after him, he will share some of that sin. Even though he died a Muslim. Nuh alayhi salam, his own son, Kanaan. His own son didn't believe. He pleaded with him, come onto the ship, come onto the boat, save yourself from the deluge. He said that I would climb a mountain and it would protect me from the water. He didn't believe. He didn't believe. His wife, Nuh alayhi salam, his wife, she tell the people he's crazy. That's not a problem. You think that's easy? For a prophet, for his son not to believe, and for his son to dry, uh, drown, and for it to be said to him, Laysa min ahlik. In the Quran it was mentioned, Laysa min ahlika. As though he is not from your family, he is not from amongst those who believed. And his wife, she would warn the people against him. She'd say, my husband is majnoon, he's, he's crazy, he's insane. That's not a problem. The father of Ibrahim alayhi salam, likewise, he was an idol worshipper. Isn't that, a, is that easy? The prophets didn't have it easy. Rather, they were the people who were most trialed. It is said, أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ بَلَاءً الْأَنْبِيَاءِ ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلَ فَالْأَمْثَلِ That the people who are trialed and tested the most are the prophets. The prophets. Ayyub alayhi salam, he remained ill for 18 years. For 18 years. And so on, and so on. There are many examples. Some of the prophets, let me give you an example of something. You know when somebody doesn't agree with you, and you know you're right, okay? You actually do know you're right. And you speak to somebody, and you try to explain to them. You say to them, look, it's like this and this, and they say, no. And you explain, and, you exp and they don't agree. They just don't agree. Then they become stubborn. I imagine doing this once. You feel something in your heart. This person doesn't agree. <sighs> Imagine doing that for about 20 years. Imagine calling people to the way of Allah Ta'ala for about 20 or 30 or 40 years. And nobody believes in you except one person. Imagine that. Some of the prophets on the day of judgment, they will have in their ranks one person behind them. One person who believed. That's tough. Uh, that's tough. So if some of us, if we suffer from certain hardships, then we should not try to use that as an excuse for falling short in aiding Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. When we know that there is an opportunity for all of us, for each and every one of us. Whether one of us is a religious teacher or one is able to aid Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah in another way. For example, by, by teaching another subject, by teaching English to some of the Muslims, for example. Teaching mathematics, teaching geography. One of them, one of the people is not able to do that. So, he donates more for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. Okay, he doesn't have much money. What does he do? He cleans 
one of the centers, for example. One is not able to do that. What does one do? One helps with traffic duty, for example. All of these things, they help. One is not able to do that. What does one do? One may clean the bathrooms, as a Shaykh Nizar, rahimahullah ta'ala, used to do. The leader of the Association of Islamic Charitable Projects, he used to clean the bathrooms. He used to clean the bathrooms. And we believe that he had a very high status, and he was very knowledgeable. Before he was martyred, they were going to make him the mufti of Lebanon. However a person is able to aid Ahl sunnah then he should do so. For you do not know in which deed you would find the most blessings. Like we mentioned, the causes are sometimes apparent and sometimes they are not apparent. Sometimes you would do something very small. You would say something even very small. And it might be that deed that is the one that gets you into paradise. And that is a reason for your other sins to be forgiven. Might be that one deed. So in a time when ignorance is prevalent, in a time where people say what they want, Imagine the reward that one of us would get if we were doing the job that the prophets were sent to do, to teach the religion. 